My name is Tara Montague. I'm the Administration Manager at Kanachiwanong Historical Center. I'm working for Rainy River First Nations. So I think the way to describe it is the program is itself. I was thinking about that because we don't have little mini programs. Our program is offering students, public, and community members um, the experience and understanding through our interpretive center of the history of this area and the history of the Ojibwe people. So when they come to visit us, whether they're students or, or depending on who comes to visit, they will actually be taken through the interpretive center that you had visited here today, see some of the displays, work with a tour guide to understand current context, where they are located, what territory they are in, um, understanding perhaps protocols and etiquettes of this particular area, and then they're walked through time of taken back in time of what happened in this area. Um, you would then go outside, not when it's minus 30, um, and you, <laughs> would be, <laughs> you would be guided by someone like Christy, um, generally in the spring on, on golf carts, um, and you'd be taken through the, the property as it goes back now uh, down the river. So that's all long soon. And that's where we have the largest concentration of known burial grounds. So burial mounds, per se. So I think people don't understand about the mounds themselves. And that's where I think a big, our program, I would say, is really concentrated on conservation of the mounds, the preservation and um, the respect still given. And teaching, when you bring your, your, your guests out, you're not only educating them about burial mounds practices, you're also giving them an opportunity to, often they offer tobacco to the mound. They're even participating in reconstruction of one of the mounds um, by off putting soil back on the mound. So you won't have that experience today. But if you do enjoy skiing, as you said you would, uh, people come out and ski um, and enjoy the scenic beauty and the peace of this area and learning back it takes you back in time when you're here. It's basically, the way it's turned in is to, to a seasonal operations, is the way I would look at it. So seasonal activities vary, as we know in, in First Nations uh, Anishinaabe culture. So what we're noticing as our, our guests are seasonal. So through September, I would say we're actually, we still get a lot of U.S. travelers that are still traveling through. Um, and we actually have a lot of, um, I would say, kind of, 55 plus uh, tourists of this area love history. Um, they, they love the understanding of this area. They're intrigued by the First Nation culture. They want to know. So we do still see a lot of that kind of tourism. But then as the seasons continue into the winter, kids want to come back out. So for most of the winter season, we're actually considered a closed facility. So because we're seasonal, so we'd be open May through end of September. But then we start catering through the quiet months, the winter months, to the children that want to come out. We get a lot of various disciplines that come to this region. Obviously, we get a flood in the summer of uh, like forest rangers, they come here. Um, uh, healthcare facilities, they come here. Uh, they just gather here. Groups come here. They want, they want lunch because we have the best fry bread ever. Uh, and they should want that. And then they come out also so that we can offer them the educational components. So it's it's nothing to see lots of archaeologists or lots of uh, botanists or lots of doctors. So it's it's just a it's a meeting place. And it was always if you think about when I gave you that history of there was communities over there, yeah. pretty far down river, and there were communities all along this river. It was very common. There were meeting grounds here. They'd come here near the rapids. They would gather here. Uh, there's there's documentation of gathering and, and having celebration, picking berries, obviously lots of um, you know mixing and, and and celebration. But obviously it was a it was a focal kind of meeting point for these communities that lived along the river, and that was right here. So I find it's still a gathering place. I think because we were trying to honor in the right way, in a respectful way, but still an accessible way. Um, for students, I know even for community members, uh, for Rainy River First Nation community members, they like coming out here and showing their children and grandchildren and, and taking part and being that there's a real sense of ownership. So there's that. That in itself is is huge because the community has 
funded <laughs> this place uh, for 20 years and through times when their doors probably would have been closed anywhere else because it just the visitation was low, the interest was low. The interest is high now because of where we're at in the, in, in the cycle of reconciliation. So people are interested in intrigue. But what makes it a center of, ex center of excellence is that this was happening um, before it was popular. And it was important back then, it was important for the elders to share with their community, not lose that story. So I, I think that makes it a center of excellence. And that I've had so many other people come here and say, I didn't know that about this area. Um, because we have a far reaching audience, we're able to share with them local history that they didn't know. They've lived here their whole life and they didn't know that history. And it changes mindsets, it changes perceptions, and now there's a greater appreciation for what really took place in this area. Indigenous education for me, I was thinking that's kind of a, that's a really broad um, scope. There's obviously in this particular area, and I'm not sure how it is in, in the different uh, districts, there's real success stories of things that have gone really, really well, great partnerships, elders coming in, doing teachings, um, experiential land-based activities, really great examples of, of Indigenous uh, education. Um, but I think there's some really, because I wasn't an educational background before, I still think of, um, that there's a lot of improvements that can be tackled. And when I think of Indigenous education, okay, so there's the there's the education of the culture, there's the education of the history and, and framing and all of that. Are we talking about educating indigenous people? Are we talking about that? So I don't know. And, and how are we educating indigenous people and how are we targeting them? Um, and I think we all agree um, and focus on the youth because uh, we want to obviously have hope <laughs> that the youth will improve where we have maybe not and we want to educate them in the best ways. So. I think Indigenous education to me is really broad. Seamless governance. So, you know, and, and, and to say, you've been here, so-and-so has been here, we're all doing the same thing. We're all working on the same, a lot of us anyway, not everyone, but a lot of us are working on the same mission, And but yeah, we're all kind of char charging forth uh, in these separate areas. Um, I feel like if we merge, and understand whether it means that we have, you know, um, I'm not sure what that next step would be, but it's really that merging of all these great talents and these great intents and to, to form them into one movement, really. And, and that would override to say, look, this is not only, um, you know, it just, it just seems like it's kind of still disconnected, you know just seems like there's a lot of disconnects. So if we were all kind of assembling, you know, whether to say, we have great examples of Seven Generations Learning Institute right here, fabulous, except I'm guilty, we don't work closely enough with them. So how can we bridge that so that we're all kind of, I don't know, mandated to be working together so that we're pooling our resources and uh, we're not having to reinvent the wheel and we're not duplicating and we're all working together at this, uh, especially in the educational realm, because like you said, there's so many great examples that you're identifying in these regions and just working together uh, somehow a little bit better.